Hello friends, this video on organisms and their surroundings part 21 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now the next important property that is shown by living organisms is that they respond to stimuli. Now what do we mean by stimuli? Let's try to understand. So even before we try to understand what exactly is stimuli, let us look at certain scenarios where we feel that we respond, we react. Now think of a scenario where a person gets an electric shock. What do you think the person would do? Will he still sit at the same place, calm and quiet? Not really. He'll start jumping. Let's say he is, was trying to sit on a chair and suddenly he gets an electric shock, he'll jump off the chair. What happens if a tiger is running behind you? What would you do? The moment you see the tiger, what would be your instant reaction? You'll immediately start running away from the tiger. So that would be your response. Similarly, there are scenarios where, say, let's say by mistake, you, you stepped on a very hot object or you stepped on fire. What happens? How do you react? You quickly take back your leg, right? Because you feel the heat, so you quickly take it back. So you react very spontaneously. So if you look at all these scenarios, what's happening when you see a dish, which is maybe your favorite dish, maybe a burger, which you love the most. The moment you see the burger, what happens? Your mouth starts watering, right? So what is, what, what is happening in all of these cases? In each of these cases, there is something which is happening in our surrounding because of which we are reacting or we are responding. Now, since there is a tiger which is running behind me, that is why I am running, right? So whatever I am doing is because of the presence of the tiger. Similarly, why am I jumping off the chair? That is because I got an electric shock. So that electric shock is causing me to jump. Similarly, when my mouth is watering, it is not watering just like that. Only after seeing the burger. So the presence of the burger is causing me to respond like this. So in all of these scenarios, we see that there is a cause because of which we are responding. So do you know what is that cause? That cause or that situation is what we call as stimulus. So that is stimulus so any such situation which makes us to respond so that situation is called as a stimulus now it has been observed that all living organisms respond to stimulus so it is not only true for human beings even tiny insects and other animals also respond so what do we understand? Stimulus is an event that gives rise to a specific reaction in an organ or a tissue. So maybe, for example, when we touch a hot mug of coffee, so we immediately move our hand. So we do not jump as a whole. We just move our hand. So only one part of our body reacts. So this is called the response. The reaction which we give is called response and the cause is called the stimulus. So th these are two important terms to understand here. So stimulus and response. So therefore, if you look at this example, when your mouth starts watering seeing a burger, so what, which is a stimulus? So the presence of this burger is the stimulus and watering of your mouth is the response. Similarly, when you step into the fire and take your leg immediately back. So the presence of the fire is the stimulus and the way you take your leg back, that is the response. Now the question is, do you think that other animals also respond? Because a lot of you might think that I don't think that other animals are intelligent enough to respond to stimulus. But that's not the case. All animals respond. So think of examples like this. Let's say there is a hunter in the forest and he suddenly, you know, he takes out his gun and he fires. So the noise that comes out of that, listening that noise, the birds start flying, the tigers, the tiger which is not even there, this tiger starts running and hiding. Why does that happen? Because the animals are responding to the stimulus. So here the stimulus is the firing of the gun. So by listening to the sound, the tiger or the birds, they feel that, okay, a hunter is there. So we might get killed. So they tend to run away from that place. So this is a kind of response. 
Similarly, uh, if you look at this, you, this is a very common scenario at your homes. Now, when you have a small fly sitting somewhere, and the moment you try to touch that fly, what happens? Or even when you try to go near the fly, it somehow detects your presence and it quickly flies away. So what, what's happening? So that the fly is responding to stimulus. So you, your presence is the stimulus because of which the fly is responding. Similarly, if there is a small mouse sitting somewhere in the corner of a room and you suddenly step in, what happens? The mouse immediately runs. Why? Because the mouse again is responding to stimulus. So your presence makes the mouse afraid and it runs away. So that, that's again a response to stimulus. So we see that all these organisms, whether it is a small insect or a mouse or a tiger or birds, they all respond to stimulus. That means all living organisms they respond to stimulus. Now let us talk about plants. Do you think plants can respond to stimulus? Yes, of course. Now, th this might not be visible for all plants very evidently, but let me give you an example of the touch me not plant. So the moment you touch this plant, what happens? The leaves, they start folding. So you, as you can see in this video, what, what's happening? The moment you're touching it, it starts responding. Now, the leaves doesn't fold on its own. It happens only when you try to touch it. So your touch is the stimulus and the folding of the leaves is the response. Now, not only the touch me not plant, even in other plants, we can see their, uh, that they, re they also respond to certain stimulus. So some plants have the tendency to respond to light. In fact, most of the plants have a tendency to respond to light. Now, just try this experiment sometime when you have time. If you take a plant, put it in a pot and place it inside your house in such a way that it is placed indoor and the light comes from this direction, maybe the window. Or maybe you keep it in your balcony where only one side of the balcony is open so the sunlight comes only from that side. After a couple of days, what would you observe? You will observe that the plant tends to bend towards the direction of sunlight. Why is that? Because the shoot of the plant, the shoot system of the plant, the stem, the branches, the leaves, they all need sunlight. So they tend to align towards the direction of sunlight. So what is happening? We are not making the plant forcefully bend. The plant is bending on its own. So basically the plant is responding to sunlight. So this is also a type of response. Similarly, there are plants which respond to gravity. So here in these plants, the roots, they generally are fond of the earth. So the roots, because the roots get all the minerals, nutrients, water from the soil. So the roots always tend to go towards the earth. So even if you keep the potted plant like this, so the roots will never grow straight like this. The roots will always come down in this way. Like when the plant is like potted like this, then the leaves are going in the downward direction. But when you put it horizontally, even then the, leaf, the roots will grow in this direction because the roots, they always respond to gravity. They always want to grow, go towards the earth. So that's why we say that the roots respond to gravity. So this way we see that even plants also respond to stimulus very well. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.